Hello again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthway, and I'm Carla Garrick. Yeah. Uh, Paul, <laughs> it's obviously it'll, hey, it's I wore my pumpkin spice I, um, colors. I have leggings on if that matters. <laughs> um, yeah, almost October. September was like woof, gone. I mean, I just I can't. I'm excited. I don't though. We're going know. camping this weekend. Oh, you are? Yep. Yeah, we're going. To go, we're going. Actually, this... so am I. Well, you... just for. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going. Oh, I know. Are, are you going out to? Never mind. Um, <laughs> I'm going camping this weekend, close by. Um, and we're gonna try to go again once more the weekend. Like I like to try to go the weekend after Columbus Day if I can, because we can't go next next weekend's Columbus Day. Yes. We then we on. have for folks watching and uh, maybe thinking about coming for a visit in New Hampshire. Full if inch. you're one of our online fans and uh, not watching this at Manch Cable TV, come. Columbus Day weekend. Yes. There's a ton of stuff going on. Yep. People can go to fsp.org and uh, let us know you're coming. Yep. And I mean, there's, uh, I mean, there's apple picking, yeah. shoots, trivia, a corn maze uh, that oh, we'd love to maze. get people. I should do a corn maze yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. done one in a while. Yeah, we, um, oh, and we would love to, although it's so backed up all the time. I Dan and I could go and drive the kank or something, but the traffic. Of yeah. Because we're not the only ones who want to see the pretty ladies. No, I mean, I always think of the well, fact that, like, especially Japanese tourists yeah. like to come that time of year. I actually think there's some simpatico between our nature, right? Mm -hmm. Like maple trees and stuff. Yeah. They're all alive, yeah. maybe not identical, uh, probably ripped from the same cloth. And, uh, and I always think, wow, someone's flying from Japan to look at my backyard, right, right. and how lucky are we, right? right? So uh, that is a way to think about our beautiful state. Yeah, we do have a beautiful state. state. Like, we just do. We have a beautiful state. I saw, you know, Facebook always shows me pictures of different things. There was a picture, and I'm like, where is that? It was um, Lake Winnipesaukee, and it was like four really pretty colored painted houses with the reflection on the water, and I'm like... I don't remember seeing those houses, but whatever. You know, um, and, and, you know, I, I think that is just going to become an online reality. You're not going to know what, what is, is really, filtered, what has been enhanced, whatever. Yeah. But the point being, think about it this way, you get to see something that delights you. Yes. It gives artists more work, uh, maybe for a while. And then, I mean, even the input to the AI. It still takes a human. It's, it, we're we're still going to need people to be like, right. we're do, well, for a while. <laughs> okay, we're going off on a tangent, yeah. but work with me so, here. Okay. So, Right after the AIs got unleashed, yeah. I noticed uh, that there were two new emoticons that I'd never seen before. Now it's possible they hadn't existed, but it's a robot arm and a robot leg that just kind of showed up with other emoticons for body parts. And I was like, where did that, that come from? Right? Okay, that was maybe a couple of months ago. And then yesterday, I was doing a, are you a human, right? Prove you're a human, the yeah. cap CAPTCHA. Yeah. Cap, what, however Whatever you it say it. Uh, and, and did it say robots? Select oh, the robots? And you're it, like, well, it, how it, do it I know it's a robot? It literally said select the robots. Like little, yeah. you know, in the grid. But, but who's there to were say two, what's a robot? There were two robots, and then the other ones were like trees and nature yeah. and what something that where yeah. it was fairly obvious. And I was just like, why is the robot asking me, to am I human, and then asking me to click the <laughs> robots? I don't know about you guys, but I think it's weird. Speaking of weird, so for those of you who've been under a rock for the past week um, here in Manchester, uh, the aldermen... In all their wisdom. In all their wisdom. Well, and I, I got a couple of gripes with it. Back at the beginning of September. So this wasn't like this happened yesterday. Back in the beginning of September, September 5th, if I'm not mistaken, on the consent part of the um, agenda for the Board of Mayor and Alderman, um, they approved a change to the city's ordinance regarding solid waste. Um, in fairness, I know Joe Lavasser, um said, wait a minute, we were told this was like big apartment buildings, like 16 unit apartment buildings. When in reality, it is four and up. Apartment buildings, four units and up. Um, which in Manchester. That what? That no longer will get um, city trash pickup. Oh, so they privatized. Well, they didn't services. actually privatize. No, they no. didn't. Nope, they didn't, because that privatizing the service would say, we have this alternative service that you can pay for. 
And here's a deduction off, off your, your tax bill. So, <laughs> 1,500 properties, which is a lot of properties. Yeah, that is a lot. That's right? it's not 1% like a, of New Hampshire. like a 60 uh, buildings. Right? right? That's a big part. 10% of Manchester. That's a lot of properties. Um, fall under this category. Okay. And the city, on December 1st, is no longer going to pick the trash up at these four and larger apartment buildings. So that's that, very quick, too, isn't well, that for city well, decisions? It's kind of like, oh, well, it's no, September to December, no, no, we're no. suddenly September just going to do... September was when the alderman approved it. This was approved by some subcommittee back in, like, April. Now, keep in mind, never along this path <laughs> did anybody call, inform, inform the four the public unit people that, you know, hey, we got an idea. We're going to stop picking up trash at the place, at many of the places that are the biggest problems with trash. So I've read articles and I've got, I'm not sure what it is. So first, let me go back to the alderman. The fact that some alderman had to have proposed it. Now, the, the, it might very well be the highway department came and said to an... But some alderman had to bring it forward. I, you don't just get stuff put on the, on the agenda. Or the mayor. Maybe the mayor thought this was a great idea. Um, and then along the way, aldermen looked at it and reviewed it. And then it, the, the vote in September, I'm really not going to fault anybody who wasn't 100% familiar there was a lot of things voted on that day um that was the day that they voted um to the make the homeless coordinator language. have her own department that was the day that they voted to not um make camping in public part of the city expanding those areas so there was like a 145 page um document that wow. goes with the agenda so the fact that there was one page, literally, like, with just, like, two paragraphs on it saying we're changing the ordinance with no backup. I, from what I could see, I didn't see any, I didn't see any documentation in there. Those aldermen are, like, going to just listen to all the other aldermen. Everybody along the line said it was fine. And actually, just so that folks understand what's at stake here. So, so basically, we're, we're uh, these four unit or more. Yep. Uh, now have to pay out of pocket yeah. so that costs something well, so what does that cost that actually costs four hundred dollars per unit per year. per year well so easily because well, like I, where i used to work we had a dumpster we i had, actually what? i actually asked Brittany. right i was gonna say it's gonna yeah. be right it's gonna i mean uh, the dumpster we had was easily two hundred dollars a month easily and it was not huge by any means so one there's n suddenly a new cost on the property owners of the pro same properties that two years ago when the revaluation raped the taxpayers, they were the raped the hardest. Um, <laughs> they were the hardest hit group of properties. Their their assessments went up like, like 76% or some insane amount. So I looked up one property over on Clinton Street because I was just trying to picture like, how is this going to work? Okay. Between 2020 and... Now, their taxes have gone up almost $2,700 a year. Wow. Now, nothing, they don't have any, up until today, now you could say they didn't get any additional services for that. And now it's even worse. <laughs> They're, They're getting, getting fewer less. services. So those landlords, whether people, I don't know why tenants or people struggle with the concept that when costs go up for landlords, rents go, go up. up. So at the same time, that, no, it's just the greedy landlords. Right, at the same yeah. time, that keep in mind that the majority of the aldermen and the mayor are all Democrats. At the same time that they're talking about low, you know, more affordable housing and doing something about housing and how do we do all this stuff, they voted, they pro promoted and voted to increase Create the costs on those landlords that are going to just turn around and raise rents and you can't really blame them. So then, so not only is there that cost, where are these 1500 dumpsters coming from? Who really thinks there's just some company with an extra 1500 <laughs> dumpsters laying around oh i didn't necessarily assume it would be dumpsters i for some reason thought oh maybe someone has like a trash removal service maybe probably one of the people who i don't know I, right uh, maybe you know, a relative of somebody i know uh, you know so, it, 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 usually one can follow the money and the, perhaps the we should do this with the this, governance right? part really kind of irks me as a second thought first i've always had a problem with tra uh, trash i have a thing <laughs> so years ago, I sat on a commission that uh, Ted Gass has put together for efficiencies and 
how to um, streamline some things in the city. And one of the, I remember there was a big push for um, encouraging people to recycle more. Now, since then, recyclables are, haven't, are, it's not as profitable as it used to be. So there's that. That doesn't, we used to be able to make money off of recycling. Now it still costs money. Um, so there was like, do you do you force recycling or do you just incentivize recycling? And you know, I'm a big fan of the carrot and stick method. Then there was a talk about um, privatizing trash. Like, should we hire a, uh, should we hire you know Joe Blow Waste Company to just pick up? The, Hold and, on, but I want to interrupt you there. It's like hire Joe Blow Waste Company. Another way to think of it is to be like, hey, should we hire our neighbors so that they have a good paying job where they're well, providing right. a service? Because no, but I think people lose sight of this. So Somewhere in all these arguments we're having, we're really talking about, you know how I've said on the show, government, there's an app for that. Mm. And my example was plow guys, right? right? Where it's like, we have this technology now that can make it possible that we could actually end up privatizing something like trash, right? Because maybe you would just pay, you would only pay for what you use instead of what we have now where Which certain I, people we are it all out. subsidizing right. other people's So when I say Joe Blow Trash Company, I just don't want to use right. it. No, but I just name. want folks but back I home. Think I think we have to we have to actually explain what we mean by free markets better yeah. so that people can and start like, to go when we talk hey, about that plowing or something appealing. being able to plow it let's just use landscaping. Let's say the parks, you know, mowing the lawns at the parks or something. That's a relatively easy thing for somebody to say, I'm going to go buy a lawnmower and mow, mow the parks, or I'm going to put a plow on my truck and I'm going to plow my street or whatever. Uh, the problem with solid waste is it all has to go someplace and there are very limited places and I'm sure it's very costly. Now, went back to why this is happening. One of two things, because I hear both. So I'm like, well, it makes me go like this. One was, for rat mitigation. Ah. So I was like, oh, because there was a kid that got bit by a rat in some multi-unit house a year or so ago or whatever. And I'm like, okay, maybe, what, I don't know. Maybe there's problems with rodents in certain, okay, fine. Which means in order to mitigate that, you need less trash for the rodents to hang out and attract them. Or it's that the city can save $200,000. Now, <clears throat> The city, supposedly, I've heard, spends $200,000 a year. But I'm like, wait, that's only one piece. That's $200,000 in direct solid waste disposal costs. That's what we pay wherever it is we bring our trash to, right? I'm like, wait, so we're going to stop picking trash up at 1,500 buildings. But the highway department has said there won't be any reduction in staff. It's a lot and, of and and and, then and to, plus staff gets plus pensions, pensions and plus, workers plus, comp and plus. health insurance. So I'm like, so what? And then I'm like, but wait, even a few years ago when we went to the automated trucks, part of the reason for that, part of it was it does reduce workers comp and injuries, injuries because and actually made, being a trash man is one very, of the most yes. dangerous jobs so, on earth. You know, Thank th you. That is a very big savings for the taxpayer to have the automated trucks, even if we had to buy the automated trucks. But we went from probably three people on a truck to now just a guy driving a truck and they did not reduce the work, the, the staffing levels. Well, let me so, ask you this. What, what are this? all these people doing? Because the what, streets look like hell. What? Yeah, what is this new uh, uh, the housing, Department of Housing Instability? Isn't it a $200,000 department? Something. That just got spun yeah, up. Yeah, so now we got oh! money for them. How funny is that? We'll just stop taking the trash. <laughs> so I look at it. I had a conversation, and I, because I'm curious, because I have my own pet peeves. I am a huge fan of the automated pickup. Uh, Victoria and I talk about this all the time, and she does her, her and I do not agree on this. But I, the way I look at it is, for me, I can buy a trash can for $80 or whatever. When I bought them, it was like 40 bucks. but whatever. I can buy this big trash can on wheels. Well, not whatever. That's also the government's fault. Well, no, they offered a free, they offered a discount for right. it to get everybody to buy them. But I'm like, it's a big trash can on wheels that is warranted for 10 years. Or I can go spend the same amount of money at Lowe's and buy a regular trash can. So it doesn't... The cost is nominal, right? I can buy as many trash cans as I want. I can put 17 trash cans out the bins if I want. The key is I have to put all my trash in the bin. 
sure are there times that that's tricky probably if you have kids and it's christmas time you might have to okay you might have to reserve some of the trash for next week you might have to do a little thinking <laughs> but and i also notice that i recycle i think more than i put in my trash can now whether that's saving the city money i have no idea anymore but it makes me feel better um and it's a separate can right so how about we start with this now I, we all have automated the the truck with the arm on the side in the um, downtown area and on a, a lot of the west side, up off of Kelly and whatnot, the trash is picked up in the alleyways. Mm. That side truck can't, it, there's not enough room. So what there is, though, they still use the bins. They have bins, but it takes a guy to roll the bin over, flip it, it flips up, it comes down, then he moves. Okay, so it's still automated. Why don't we just start not picking up the trash that isn't in the bins, right? Like, why are people still putting trash on the ground? Because you see it. And then you know where it is? You know where I see it the most? It's outside these apartment buildings that are bigger than four units. Well, Because I... people don't know that they can't put the trash on the ground. So how do you get that message to the tenants in these buildings I mean, it'd probably be cheaper to give everyone a trash can than it yeah, would be to like but, do but they, whatever they're doing. But even though doing, they have but... trash cans and they still pile crap on the sidewalk because that's how trash gets picked up apparently in somebody's mind. Now, I also heard from the person I was talking to that the problem they're having in a lot of the alleys. So now we're with the rodents and now we're with the other one? Yep. Okay. Is people are putting their trash in their bins. And then people are coming down the alleyway and picking through the trash mm. and leaving it all on the ground. So that is so, um, that is that is a, a sign of malaise, right? right. That is when when uh, right who no, picks he, through right? Right. So you've got all these <laughs> things, and I'm just thinking. So you're gonna. I took the house on Clinton Street again that went up twenty seven hundred dollars in taxes, and I thought, where the heck are they even going? Like, I don't even know how many companies could handle a large amount of pickups even for pay, right? So then dumpsters. So then uh, back to the not very good management from the on the the uh, from the highway department or the border alderman. There is a waiver form apparently, but they didn't even have it on the website. Like or they didn't tell people in the letter saying, "Oh, by the way, we're not picking up your trash so, in 8 so weeks." So when when were the uh, when were the land owners or the They just got owners those le noticed. letters in the last 10 days. So, so it, again, you know, for folks who've been watching this show for a while, remember back when we were doing the, uh, the battle between the community garden and, hmm. uh, uh, then mayor Craig's right. Where's donors, the info? right? Where's... It was like the, the real argument was like, why didn't you ever talk, talk to us? Right. And, and it's like, you when what yeah it's where's the so like those land those property there were six owners six months where the property no, owners could have been told something so these are the people you're actually demanding a sacrifice from right like you're <laughs> saying you have to pay with no yeah, service you, you have to pay with no service so i looked up the waiver form because i was okay. like okay what what's the story there so this is what it says on the website city of manchester recently introduced introduced eligibility criteria for municipal trash collection these criteria help ensure efficient waste management and community cleanliness. Okay. However, we understand that unique circumstances may require exceptions. This form allows property owners to request a waiver from these criteria. The decision to grant a waiver based on factors such as space constraints, historical trends, or other relevant issues will be made by the director of public works. Please complete this form to request a waiver. Thank you for cooperation. And that basically asks for the owner's name, the contact number, the address and email and why, why so you want an appeal. So it's a waiver from? It's a waiver to say, no, we still need you to pick up the city. Oh, okay. So they're saying we're not going to pick it up anymore, but you, can but, but you can file this waiver form if you know about it, which you now all do, and then they can grandfather you in. So why? But then the, that's even worse to me. It, because, it really so that, is. So wait, we're going to say, let's now take space. Right. So this property that doesn't have any off street it's parking. It's arbitrary. Right. It's so arbitrary. Wait, so because We're not treating everyone a... the same. And that is the problem with the laws these days. Like, We're just on. writing all these so laws. I, I, it's back, insane. Back to the, the <laughs> automated pickup. So I said, I was talking and I said, how about this? Tell me if I'm crazy because I've always thought this. So if, 
I mean, we already see the problems with dumping. You see it, you find couches. I mean, people are reporting it all the time on the C-Click Fix that there's a couch someplace or there's a mattress someplace because the bulky item pickup, <coughs> while it's not an insanely complicated process, just gets ignored. Yeah. The people who, you know, there's a, still people who ignore it and just put the stuff out on the sidewalk and they, they don't Hope care. Hope for the best. Hope for the best. So... Let's play trash collector guy. First of all, I've always thought that the trash collector guy, when he drives by a mattress, should at least be have a clipboard that he makes note that there's a mattress. Well, just on drop such pins a, in. Something. And, and, like, have a but system. I'm saying, if it can't be that, if it's automation can't work, get a clipboard with a pad. <laughs> and you can write down the address and put mattress and then hand the pa paper off to whoever. And they say, oh, we better send the solid waste guy. Or, as what I, uh, in my experience happens, they drive by it for six months <laughs> and it gets buried under the snow and then in the spring it gets melted and you're like what and then eventually it? there's a sign on there that says, says do not take bed bugs right and i'm oh. like oh my god so we already don't do it so now i'm being that the trash collectors aren't going to do it anyways so what if when joe blow the track you know the pickup guy goes down the street and there's the cans you know there's the receptacles for trash and then there's you know i don't know whatever next to it should he pick that up <laughs> not if it's a woman <laughs> well, right. but, I'm, but i'm just saying if if there's a you know a pile of bed pill it doesn't even matter what it is it's not in a receptacle it's not in the the bin <laughs> and if he's just the one guy driving the truck, does he now get out of the truck and like? And even if it's the guy, I don't know. Tell so I'm me. like, okay. It's so so now <laughs> what do we do? So I'm like, how about this? How about the first time it happens, we send we again make a note of the address and we send and the city sends a letter to the landlord that says your tenants are not. Because I don't know if the landlords even know. But but it doesn't sound to me, I mean, now we're sort of assuming that there was some magical reason why they made this decision. But well, just, do, do I, we know what know. the reason Rat is? Rat mitigation and $200,000. Okay, so that seems not clear. Clear or... or <laughs> a, a, it seems like a big change or, for that. Um you know, maybe maybe we try and get rid of the rats. <laughs> well, that's what I'm like. I'm like, if there's a rat problem, well, shouldn't we just be addressing the rat problem rather than making everybody across the entire city yes. do something different? I don't know. And then somebody did to the skeptics, because there are a lot of skeptics out there these days. Okay, it said, <laughs> okay, so we're going to say we're not picking up trash at the four plus units. When... What, are we, what are we not picking trash up at next year? Are we going to not pick up trashes on odd numbered houses? Are we going to go to once a month trash pickup? I mean, you know, we'll just lop off the service and you'll still pay for it because these tent, these property owners are still going to pay for it. And if we've got this waiver and thing, there's no way they can credit them because what are they going to do? Give, give Joe property. Now you're going to say, well, I can get my trash picked up cheaper. Right. So I would like $400 off my, tr my property taxes and I'll drive it to the dump. <laughs> it, it, it's nuts. The we're, uh, the city is not good at this city is not good at planning, managing, and implementing things. And They're just so, not good at it. Actually, uh, playing off that, of course, you know, we have an election coming up. And so with uh, Kevin oh, Kavanaugh, oh my he's been there for eight years. eight years. If you think the city is not going in the right direction, I would not like, right, so eight be years, like, yo, right, let's get more it, of this since, happening. If you think the city has not been improving since 2015, when Kevin Kavanaugh became alderman, why would you think it'll change when he gets moved, if he got moved up the food chain and gave him more power? No. I don't get it. I no. don't. Um, um, and honestly, I mean, I, I didn't really follow Jay's uh, race no, very no. closely, but I did hear him speak a couple of times now. And I think he... He sounds like he actually has yeah. plans. He's willing to talk to people, which is part of this thing, right? Like you can't just be you like, can't oh, just be sitting in an office and be like, we're going to do this. We're going to disadvantage 1,500 people. 1,500 uh, property owners. I don't property even know owners, how many people tenants. who pay the taxes, uh, you know, all of that. Um, but every day we have to hear about, oh, the unhoused, the homeless, the, you know, all of that. It's, it reminds me of one time on, on NPR, they actually did read this on the air, 
they were talking about minimum wage, right, which is not an issue in New Hampshire. Very no. few people, in fact, I think currently probably no one, since right. you can make 18 bucks shucking oysters in New Hampshire now. You can get paid 30 bucks at Boards and Brew to, to, to be a bartender. To a bartender. I mean, that included tips. So. But 30 bucks but still, an hour. Yeah, it's, it's a decent wage. So on NPR one time, I, I sent in the comment because they were talking about minimum wage, and I said, you know, there are less people in the United States who make minimum wage than there are libertarians. Right. So if we're going to do equal access to right. news or whatever that rule is they had for a time, I was like, every time you guys talk about minimum wage, you have to talk about free markets right. because that's but but fair. But that's and, not how and, it is. They just shove certain right. things and, um, down our throats continually. And so I think it's so important for people to understand that there's this other story of success and, and people getting richer and pursuing the American dream and all these like beautiful things that yes. can happen in the economy if we stop meddling. And so no one hears that story anymore, but you should, because if you think about why is everyone poorer now, it's like that is a reality and it is because government is too big. And they get in the way and they just don't, nothing, it, nothing good comes out of government. That's just the reality. Nothing good comes out of government. So. Um, so there. So there's that. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll see if I can get more information. I think the um, the board of mayor and aldermen have a meeting next Wednesday, next Tuesday night. Um, so that would be the fur. That's probably the third, October third. Um, I'm sure that'll be a fun one to watch. Um, <laughs> You know, if you if you live in one of those apartment buildings and you're tired, you know, your rent went up two years ago when the taxes all went up and you're up in arms about that, um, maybe you should take a minute and go down to the city hall and speak your mind. And if you live next to one of those buildings and you're concerned about what the tra what this new ordinance that nobody knew about, um, how that impacts your property, you should chime in. Because if people speak up more, maybe the maybe city will know that there's enough people who, you know, don't like some of the things that they're doing without our input. So that's it. That's all we got. Um, enjoy the weather. It's going to be dry all weekend. Um, 70s, nice, perfect weather. Um, if you so have a fire permit to have a fire. <laughs> um, otherwise, we'll be back next week. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.